Hello, BookTube. Welcome to Lizzie Pay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth, and this is Mary. <laughs> if you didn't see my Scholastic Warehouse haul, then you haven't met Mary yet. She is not our dog. We are dog sitting for the lady who I drive for one or two days a week. Uh, she's out of town, out of state right now at a family wedding. And so we volunteered to keep little Mary. Mary is an 11 year old uh, Yorkie and she's just precious so we have had a lot of fun with Mary the last few days and I just thought I would uh, put her on the video because how often do I get a chance to have a puppy this cute in a video <laughs> so anyway I'm gonna put her down and then we're gonna get on with a book haul so I have filmed this a couple of times and I keep having to start over because I don't have much uh, memory left on my phone and I keep you know rattling on and rambling on and making this too long. So um, I want to, as quick as I can, tell you about the books I have bought recently. Now I already posted my Scholastic Warehouse book sale haul and also a, uh, and in that video I showed a few middle grade books that I have bought used over the past few days. Um, I went last Friday to the Scholastic Warehouse and on the way I also stopped at the Orlando Public Library because about three times a year they have a big sale in their uh, in-library bookstore. Um, they do like a whole weekend where everything in the store is half off and I've been before and I enjoyed it and so since they were both happening at the same time I decided I would just try to hit both in one day and I had a lot of fun then uh, on Saturday the next day I met my mother-in-law for lunch I needed to give her some stuff and she said well why don't we meet for lunch and I said well why don't we meet at a library <laughs> because uh, at the town that's halfway between my town and her town they have a little library sale every Saturday morning from 9 to noon and uh, she'd never even been to that library and I said well let's just meet there and so she beat me there she's a big reader too and so she already had a bag full of books before I even got there and I, I can't show you what she got because um, she has her books but uh, anyway we had a good time and I bought um, just a handful of books there then uh, we went to um, let me find what I bought um, we went to my friend's little resale shop that's in that same town, and I bought a rubber stamp for $2. Isn't that cute? A little Christmas scene. And so then we went to lunch, and then it started pouring down rain, and she said, oh, I better just head on home. But meanwhile, we had heard about another library in a nearby town that was having a half-price sale. They also have a little in-library store. And so very similar to what Orlando had done, they have, I think once a month, they have a Saturday where they do everything in the store half off. So um, I bought two or three middle grade books there, which I've already shown on my other video. And I think maybe just one, um, one or two adult books. So, uh, so those will be in this haul. So the majority of this haul I got at Orlando and then um, two or three I got at the other library. So most all of these books are going to be what I traditionally purchase and that is comfort reads and cozy mysteries. Uh, with the exception of two books I'll put at the end that are mysteries but I don't think they would be classified as cozy. So uh, as far as comfort reads, now I want to show you these three first that I am most excited about. So some of you may recall, uh, probably it's been several months ago now, I did a video where I talked about some library checkouts that I had seen, you know, that I had checked out and that I was interested in reading. And one of those books was a Florida-based book called Bath Pond. I saw it, I was just, you know, walking up and down the aisles at our library and, uh, and it caught my eye. And so I checked it out. I never have had a chance to read it, but it's been in the back of my, and it's been on my radar. And so while I was now fast forward to the present, while I was, uh, you know, shopping at the Orlando Public Library, I was so excited to, to look on the shelf and see not one, but three books that are related, um, not only Bath Pond itself, but uh, two others. And I looked it up on Goodreads when I got home, and there's at least 
five or six in the series. Now, what attracted me to, to this book in the first place, you can see the beautiful cover. It's got the uh, oranges. And this picture reminds me so much of a photo we have of my husband's great-grandparents when they came on a trip to Florida from Canada, and they had their picture taken in an orange grove. And at that point, they decided that they were going to go back to Canada and move all of their children by train to Florida. And this is in the early 1900s. My husband's grandmother was, I think, born in 1914, and she was about six at the time, or maybe younger. So that tells you kind of the time frame. And, and this, I think, is going to be a very similar time frame, time setting. So this book, uh, I've heard, um, I've read some good things about. Um, I did see one review that compared it to the Patrick Smith books, like A Land Remembered, and they said that this was not as good. Um, but anyway, I, I'm still excited to read it. And so then... The second book in the series is called Fortune's Crossing, and these are by Lowell Teal. This particular edition is soft cover with French flaps, and it's also autographed. But uh, some of these have won awards. Bath Pond and the third book, Inherited Journey, have the President's Book Award, which is given by the P Florida Publishers Association. And they're just beautiful covers, and I, I really think these are books that my husband and I both will enjoy. So I am just thrilled to get those when I didn't even know they, they existed, you know, anything past the first one. Okay, so then speaking of pretty covers, I picked up this because I was looking for a different book by Gil McNeil, and they didn't have the one I was looking for, but I saw this one. It's called A Good Year for the Roses. Now, the one I'm looking for is book two in the knitting trilogy, Beach Street and Yarn Knitting uh, society, something like that. Uh, the second book is called Needles and Pearls, and I have the first and the third. And I've been looking for the second one. Haven't found it anywhere. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so this looked really pretty, and I decided to go ahead and grab it. And then I am excited to find the last, uh, at least the fourth book, I don't know if it's going to be the last one, in the Big Stone Gap series by Adriana Trigiani. This is re uh, home to Big Stone Gap. I have just recently bought the first three. It looks like an awesome series that I am excited to read. And then I didn't know this one existed, but this is the sequel to Friendship Cake. And I have started Friendship Cake. I read the first chapter for a try a chapter tag. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, my sister read it and she said it wasn't her favorite, but it was okay. And, uh, and so this is the sequel. And I think there's maybe several in the series that I didn't even know about till I looked this up today. And this by Lynn Hinton. It's called Hope Springs. And the series is also called Hope Springs. Then, this is a book I'm very familiar with, a story. I saw this movie back in the 70s, and I was just looking up the book. It actually was nominated for several awards back in the early 70s, and it's such a good story. It's about a family of children whose parents have both died, and they keep the fact that their dad has recently passed away a secret so that the government will not come in and uh, split them up and... and take them away from their home in the North Carolina mountains. It's such a moving story, and uh, I am really excited to read it again. I, well, I say again, I don't know that I've ever actually read the book. I have watched the movie uh, several times, and um, I, I thought I had a copy of the book, and I might, but if I find that I do have a duplicate, then I'll share this with someone else, but uh, it's it's such a good story. Then, uh, speaking of duplicates, <laughs> I bought a copy of Pat of Silverbush by L.M. Montgomery, or as I like to say, her full name, Lucy Maud Montgomery. To me, that rolls off the tongue a lot easier than L.M. Montgomery. But uh, anyway, I didn't think I had this, but I do. I have both the books in the duology already on my shelf, so at some point, I'll share this with someone else. I have been saying for a while that I'd like to do a video about Lucy Maud Montgomery and all of the lesser-known works in her catalog because she's got some fantastic books and a lot of shorter series and um, and books that uh, and short stories uh, separate from the Anna Green Gables stories and uh, they're all wonderful so this is one of those and um, at some point whenever I do that video I think I have maybe a couple of other duplicates and I'll do some some sort of a giveaway and then this is also to give away to my sister. I've been trying to collect a series, uh, the whole series of the Welcome to Tyler books for her. I have the whole set for myself. And uh, I was originally attracted to these because of the quilt on the cover. Each of the covers have a different uh, quilt theme, a different color scheme. And yet all of the... Uh, 
all of the quilt blocks, each one relates to its own story. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but there's 12 books. They're lettered A to L, and this is L. So now I think I just need one other one that I need to find, and I can send her the rest of the set. I've already given her, I think, the first five, and I've got the rest in a stack here. And I didn't want to send her those until I found the ones that I still needed because I was afraid I'd send them to her, and then I'd forget which ones I still needed to buy for her. But I knew I needed the last one, and I found it at, um, where did I find this one? I think I found this at a thrift store, actually, but I don't know what thrift store. No, it was at the, the library we went to on Saturday, I believe. Anyway, I got it somewhere. It's here. And it's going to my sister. All right, so now let's look at the Cozy Mysteries. I have five hardcovers and seven uh, mass market paperbacks. This is a series I've already started reading, The Coffee House Mysteries by Cleo Coyle. This is a Brew to a Kill, book 11. And uh, it's just a fun series set in a coffee house. And uh, I, I am enjoying it. I've read two of them so far, and I, uh, I plan to continue. This is a series I started collecting. I found the uh, two or three of them at a library book sale, but they are farther down the series. So I recently got book one. This is book five, Hollywood Stuff. It's the Jane Wheel Mysteries by Sharon Pfeiffer, I think. Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer. Um, looks fun. Looks like a fun series. And then another series that I've been collecting a few of and have not started reading is The Seaside Knitters. And it's by Sally Goldenbaum. This is The Wedding Shawl. And it is book five. And look at that beautiful cover. And speaking of beautiful covers, I did buy one that's not in a series that I've ever even heard of, but it's a guidepost book. I think it's a fairly new series that they've started publishing, and the cover's just stunning. It's called T-Rose by Erin Keeley Marshall. It turns out it's the second book in the Tea Room Mysteries. I don't even know what the first book is, but I could not resist that cover. That's beautiful. And in this cover, I could resist. In fact, I've seen this at the bookstore before, um, but it was half off. So, um, you know, I went ahead and grabbed it because most recently, Sharla, my sister, has been telling me about this series. It's the Annie's Quilted series, and she's been reading them. Her library started getting them one each month. They subscribed. And so um, I had a couple of them on my shelf already. This is book four. I think I have one and five already on my shelves. She's been really enjoying them and recommending them to me, so I went ahead and grabbed that. It is called Broadery Curse by Jan Fields. It's kind of hard to see the title. So then my mass markets. Only one of these is a book I've already read, and I went ahead and grabbed it because it's the first in a series. I sent my copy to Sharla, and um, I told her not to worry about, you know, sending it back or anything, uh, and I just went ahead and grabbed this copy because I still have a, some of the series. It's the series I'm reading. She started going ahead and getting them from her library, so that's why I didn't send her any more. And uh, they had this at the sale, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and grab it. That way it will help complete my set. And uh, when I get done reading them, then I can pass the whole set on to someone else. And I didn't want it to be missing the first book. So uh, anyway, this is A Peach of a Murder by Olivia J. Washburn. It's This is the series that's about a group of retired teachers all living together in a house. Then I got two Laura Childs books. I got the uh, 17th book in the Tea Shop Mysteries called Devonshire Scream. I read the first two books, really enjoyed them. And then I have not started reading The Cackleberry Club. I believe this is set in a cafe, and this is called Eggs Benedict Arnold. This uh, is also a series by Laura Childs that looks awesome. And then I got... Red and Buried. This is book two in the Ashton Corners Book Club Mystery Series by Erica Chase. I have not started that, but I have a couple of those. And then, I believe this is book four in the Cat in the Stacks Mysteries called Out of Circulation by Miranda James. I think now I have all of the first six of these. Maybe there's maybe 10 or 12 of them, but I have at least the first six. And then this is a series that I already have two of. I believe I have the first two. The Candy Holiday Mysteries by B.B. Haywood. This is book three, Town in a Moose, Wild Moose Chase. <laughs> these look fun. And then book seven, Town in a Cinnamon Toast. So those are awesome. And then two books that I don't believe are cozy, but I've been looking for this. I have books one and three in this series by Mary Anna Evans called the uh, Faye Longchamp series. And Faye Longchamp is a budding archaeologist. And this is called Relics. The first one I think is Artifacts and the third one is Effigies. And so I was needing book two. 
And then I was super excited to find this because this is going to be our uh, June pick for our new mystery book club at my local library. Now recently I was asked by the librarian to take over that book club. It was started a few months ago. It's had a hard time getting off the ground and so they asked me if I might take it over and uh, and see if I could uh, get it rolling. And so we had a, a small meeting. Our our publicity for the, the most recent meeting had a few snags, uh, so we didn't have a big turnout, but we still went ahead and chose books for the next six or eight months. And uh, I have started a discussion thread on the Mystery Madness Goodreads group because I told the local group that we're going global. We are inviting all of the members of the Mystery Madness Goodreads group to be a part of the book club, and I will uh, very soon be publishing a list of all that we've chosen for the next few months and starting discussion threads for those. And then as any of you want to read those books and leave comments on the Goodreads group. I will share those comments with the local group and then I will also share some of their comments on the Goodreads group. So it will be a lot of fun. And this is our first book, Naked Came the Manatee. It's by Carl Hyacin and a whole lot of other Florida authors. Elmore Leonard, Dave Barry, um, others that I have not heard of, but I am just super excited. This is not a long book at all. And how I, as I, my understanding of this is that each of these authors wrote one chapter. It's one novel with each chapter uh, by a different author and then it's all rolled into one book and it's one big mystery so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to read and uh, hopefully those of you outside of Florida won't have trouble finding this there I believe there is another compilation book of this nature called Naked Came the Phoenix and it's written by another group of authors uh, from the southwest of, of the United States so uh, I believe it's a nationally published book. It's not just Florida, but it just so happens that it's um, written. This one is written by Florida authors. Anyway, uh, this is our uh, next Mystery Book Club selection. It'll be for June. We'll be meeting the second week of the second Thursday of June. And so if you'd like to get in, if you'd like to read it now and get in some comments before our next meeting, then um, please do so. But even at whatever point you read the book, I will still share your comments with the group, even if it's a few months from now. So it's going to be very laid back and, um, and just a lot of fun. So I am super excited about this. So now that I believe is everything for this book haul. And I, this is like the third time I filmed it. And I think I finally have made it in by the time so that the camera's not going to cut off on me. Uh, so anyway, that is all for this video. Um, I, don't plan to do too many more book hauls, at least not big ones, because quite honestly, I almost have all of the books that I want or need, uh, with a few exceptions to finish filling out a few series that I'm collecting. Uh, this summer, I'm going to be working on a big household project. I'm going to be weeding out some books and, uh, and probably rearranging everything that's back here. Of course, we're adding on to our house on the other end. There's going to be a lot going on. I probably will take a little channel break, but I'll be talking more about that later. So uh, anyway, there, there's more to come, but I probably will do, be doing less and smaller book hauls at least in the next uh, few months. So anyway, that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have you read any of these books? Are any of these books uh, books that you are interested in reading? And if so, then at whatever point I get around to reading them, we can chat about them. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.